the title of my session with you this morning is you love me too much to leave me here. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, all right, all right, all right. Somebody look at your other neighbor and say, oh, here we go. If you're new, uh, I was born and raised in Tennessee. I live in South Florida. I'm black and I'm a preacher. Just like the Medea movies. It's about to go down up in here, y'all. And they gave me a white hanky. Now, they knew I was black. They gave me a towel. I said it in the chapel this morning. If you ever got a black preacher and he don't sweat, he ain't black. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, here we go. Y'all ain't ready for me. Get your Bible and go to the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Colossians 2, 14. If you're going to shout for the word of God, go ahead and shout. Don't be playing around. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Now look at me. I'm going to move pretty fast for two reasons. Number one, I feel God's ready to do something up in this room tonight. And number two, I'm hungry. <laughs> going to give me some chicken. It's Sunday. Brothers love chicken on Sunday. Y'all like, oh, he's racial. No, it's the truth. (laughs) Y'all ain't ready for me. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, by counseling the record of debt that stood against us, everybody say us. Now, come on, I'm going to make you talk to me. Everybody say us. I love that word us. It doesn't, it makes everybody, we all in the same boat. I don't care how much money you got. You nasty. That's what the Bible says. Okay, look, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What is sin? Sin is nasty. So guess what? You nasty. You nasty, I'm nasty, we nasty. You wish you were nasty? Well, you are. There you go. But the Bible says that God knew how to take care of us. Somebody had to pay the ransom that stood against us. And his name's Jesus. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, somebody paid it for you. The ransom that stood against us with all its legal demands. There's no way out when it's legal demands. Y'all know that, right? This he, Jesus, set aside, nailing it to the cross. I love the cross. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, the Bible says this. And being found in human form... He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. That's what Jesus did for us. When I was a kid growing up, our church used to have an Easter play. Y'all remember those? I don't know about how you grew up, but my church, we could butcher the story of Jesus like nobody I knew. I'll prove it. Okay, now, it was good. At times, it was just perfect. Everything went right. But one time, we had a six-foot, seven-inch Jesus. That's Jesus. That's the Jesus I see. Some people got Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes, wearing a white dress and a purple sash, running through the woods, hugging trees. Oh, no, no, no. In my world, Jesus, Arnold Schwarzenegger in a Terminator with guns saying, I'll be back. That's my Jesus right there. So when we had a six, seven Jesus, I'm like, that's what we talking about. Brother cut, except he had a low sugar problem. And on that Saturday, we had to do five programs. Now, I'm in high school trying to help out. And his wife came and said, I know that. Look, he about to pass out. You got to do something. I said, well, what do you do? She goes, I usually get a Big Mac and a Coke. And once he eats it, his sugar levels are back up and he's good to go. I said, well, can he make it till he's in the tomb? She goes, absolutely. So we went across the street, got a Big Mac and a Coke put it in the tomb so while you know <laughs> that y'all smart y'all know where this going don't you <laughs> it wasn't good it wasn't it did, it did okay so let's just say this all right Jesus in the tomb we put a monitor so he can hear what's going on so he knows when the tomb is about to roll away and it bounce a time or two and the angel stepped inside and said I'm Gabriel who are you that's something like that all right 
all of a sudden the tomb bounced away. The, the spotlight was like, and it shined in the tomb. Here's Jesus. Big Mac in the left hand, a large Coke in the right. And he like, and it must have shocked him because you know what he did? He took one last bite before he came back. I don't know. I just, we just killed that st- little kids going home. Mama, Jesus had a Big Mac. He the man. <laughs> One night I was hanging out. I was with my dad. It was, it was, uh, and uh, the part came where Jesus was hanging on the cross. And we had a narrator. The narrator explained the crucifixion. Have you ever, I, was, I know y'all know this, that, that, that your life is, is, is lines. Your life is is, is parallel and horizontal. That's the way we live, all right? So some Roman dude decided if we really want to kill somebody and make it really hurt, hang them on a tree so that their own lungs fill up with their own body fluid and they choke to death on their own body fluid. That's the way the cross was invented. For all the murderers, thieves, and liars, and rapists to be humiliated in front of the world and have their family humiliated. It was all about humiliation. And so they use nails so that if you can pull yourself over that line, it hurts really bad. Then you got to fall back down on the nails again. A lot of people think that Jesus had his hands and then his feet when actually it was the wrist. These two bones coming up are very strong. And if you hit it right, you can hang a brother on his own body for a while and he won't die. But the only way he could do it is to pull himself up, breathe in and fall down. That's why in gymnastics they have what they call the iron cross on the loops where the guy hangs out and he doesn't even shake. He just hangs out parallel like that. It's the iron cross. Jesus pulled himself up on those nails and he wouldn't die. And a narrator in this in the play explained that it must have taken excruciating pain for Jesus to do it over and over and over and over again. Now, my dad, who is a janitor, okay, he's a janitor at a school his whole life. He leans over to me and goes, do you know why it took Jesus so long to die? I said, no, I'd have died on the first nail in the first hand. I would be like, tink, Reggie's dead. I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> why, why prolong what's going to happen, all right? My dad said that he believed that Jesus Because he's half God and half man, on the outside he was human, and his human was dying. But he was still God's son on the inside. So on the inside, he saw every face of every person that would ever be born on the face of the planet Earth. And he put every name with every person who would ever be born on the face of the planet Earth. And he kept pulling himself up and falling down until he saw the last person that would ever be born on the face of the planet Earth. Only then did he say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So whether you believe in Jesus or not, he did it for you. Whether you serve him or not, he did it for you. He paid the way so that you don't have to worry about it. Whether you accept the ransom or not, doesn't matter. He did it for you. Hit your neighbor and say, he did it for you. 1 Peter chapter 2, let's read that one. Verse 24 says this, He himself bore our sins on his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Did y'all get that? By his wounds we have been healed. It's not we can be healed. It's not we might be healed. It's not we will be healed. We have been. It's in the past sense. It's already done. Oh, you got to do some of red. You ain't feeling the pain up in my body today. It's already done. It's already done. Touch your neighbor and say, he did it for you. When I was a boy growing up, I had the greatest false secret. But just in case, uh, let me, I got to do this because some of you knew. Uh, my name, Reggie. My last name, Dabs, D-A-B-B-S. That was my name uh, when I was 14. Because, see, before that, I was just Reggie. Because uh, I'm a bastard kid. I grew up in foster care because my mom's a prostitute. Uh, my mom slept with a man for $20 to get food for my brother and my two sisters. My mom kept my brother and my two sisters. But my mama said that I was a mistake and she wished I'd never been born. So she gave me away to her favorite teacher, who was an English teacher, whose husband was a school janitor, and they raised me. At 14, they gave me my last name. They told me about Jesus, took me to church every day, and that's why I'm on this platform today. Hey, by the way, some of you, let me help you out. Some of you are going, 
Well, you went over your story really fast. You know why? Because it's real simple. You see, my past is my history, but my future is my destiny. And the day I met Jesus, he started writing the script. Y'all know what I'm saying? See, look, you can write your own script and you can let Jesus be a main character or you can give Jesus the pen and you be the character and let him be the author of the rest of your life. I'm here today to get somebody to give that brother the pen. You can make a good song, but he'll make the bridge. And when he goes to that last chorus, he'll make you a great hit. You'll be a billboard top seller up in this place. But you got to choose to let him finish it, not yourself. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, let him write your song. Touch your other neighbor and say, let him author your book. Man, I'm preaching good today. I'm just just saying, and I I got something else. I got more. Here's what happened. When I was a little boy growing up, my mama used to put us to bed every night. I have a brother who's about five years older than me. And every night she'd come in our bedroom, she'd tuck us in and she would grab a chair and she would tell stories. My mama, the greatest storyteller I've ever heard in my life. She would tell us the great Bible stories like David and Goliath, Daniel and the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and a big Negro. Those are the stuff I grew up with. (laughs) Dude, I say that so much, it just comes out and then people laugh and I realize, y'all didn't know he the original brother, did you? (laughs) You did. Yeah, yeah, I know, man, I know. (laughs) I'm just saying. (laughs) One night, my mama came in, and she didn't just do the main one. She did like, have you ever heard of a dude in the Old Testament named Shama? Okay, look, check this out. Dude, it's in the Bible. That's what my mom, my mom would go, it's in the Bible. (laughs) All her stories, she would say, it's in the Bible. It's true. She came in, she sat down, she said, the good guys are the Israelites. The bad guys are the Philistines. She said, one day, the Philistines decided they were steal vegetables from the Israelites. So they'd go find farms and they'd raid the farms and steal all the vegetables. One day they went to the wrong farm. There was a dude named Shama. He was a lentil farmer. Ain't nothing but peas. Lentils, peas. Cool name for peas. And one day, these Philistines go, we need some peas. So let's go down and raid that little pea patch. Wrong farmer. Because when they came down the hill, my mom flips the chair around. She's riding the chair. She goes, they were chanting, peas, peas, we want peas. But Shama in the middle of his pea patch like, "Uh uh-uh, these are my peas. You ain't messing with my peas. And my mama said that he put the slap down on all those Philistines trying to steal his peas. Then my mom flips the story. She looked at me and she said, you need to understand. God's going to fight for you. He created you. He exhaled and you inhaled. He's got you whether you want to or not. He's got a plan for your life. He's got a purpose for your life. And he'll save you like that man saved his peas. Mama, it's in the Bible. <laughs> Good night, babies. And she leaves. One night, mama gone. She went to a teacher's conference. So my dad puts us to bed. Okay, let me help you with this. My dad, like 6'4", 6'5", bald-headed, got a vein right here pop up and down when he get mad. He looking like a Klingon from Star Trek. <laughs> deep voice, real deep. He looked at us that night, he's like, go to bed. And we're like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Now my brother, who's five years older, he looks back and goes, dad, tell us a story. And my dad's like, go to bed. And he goes, mama tells us a story. And he goes, <sighs> Okay. Okay. My dad walks in our bedroom, gets us in bed, opens the curtain by my bed and says, see the moon? Tonight's the night. I'm like, for what? And he's like, tonight's the night the swamp man comes. I'm like, the who? And he's like, the swamp man will crawl up the side of your window and make noises. Don't open the curtain. If you do, he'll suck you out the window. The swamp man loves little chubby black people, so go to bed. Good night. (laughs) All I can hear is my mom. It's in the Bible. (laughs) Pitch black. My brother goes, you scared? I went, nah, I ain't scared. He goes, you scared? I ain't scared. Then he pulled out. This is old school. If you're young, you won't understand this. He goes, I double dog dare you to get out of bed. Double dog dare you. Double dog. Double dog. Nobody double dogs. So I got up. I'm jumping around the room. I'm like, come on, swap man. All of a sudden, hey, it was him. I jumped in bed. My brother's in bed with me. I said, what are you doing? He said, open the curtain. I went, no. He said, why? I said, he'll suck me out the window, bro. 
My brother went, bro, you don't fit out the window. <laughs> he had a point, all right? I opened the curtain, nothing. I opened the window, nothing. I stuck my head out the window, boom, it was my dad. That's how I grew up, y'all. I'm definitely a miracle. <laughs> it was Easter weekend. It was Saturday night. My mom came in and grabbed a chair. But this time it was a little different. When she sit down, she says, sit on the edge of your bed. I need you to listen to me. I, said, I pray you never forget this story as long as you live. Can I tell you a story? Okay, okay. Hey, uh, Mark, where, uh, Mark's gonna help me, Mark. Cause you can't tell a story like this without a little, little kind of little piano kind of story time. Give it up for Mark, give him a hand, man, give him Mark. Mark, good. Hey, can I say something? It's crazy, like, ain't nobody moving but the dude in the orange shirt that just jumped up and ran out the back door. <laughs> Come back. No, I'm just joking, bro. You can come back. <laughs> he just put his head down and went, no. <laughs> There's something wrong. I know some of you are like, I am too spiritual for this. <laughs> you think you are. <laughs> Bible says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Y'all need to quit complaining and start drinking. Hey, you know, angry people don't get healed. That's a whole nother sermon. Let's just stop. Let me just go on. Watch. Everybody hit your neighbor and say, here we go. Hit your other neighbor and say, it's on. <laughs> There's adults like going. Just go ahead and lean in. It's going to be good. So here's how my mom started. She said, it was early on a Friday morning in a big city. A 16-year-old boy was sleeping in his bed, and he heard something out his window. You see, his window faced the alley, and it was so early, the sun hadn't even risen. The boy jumped out of bed, and he opened the window, and when he looked in the alley, he saw something he never dreamed he would see. In the stench of the early morning dew in the ugly, nasty city, in the alley behind his house, a man pushing an ugly old cart was singing loud rags rags trade your old for new rags rags trade your old for new he never heard nothing like that and something inside the boy just leaped in him and said you got to follow that dude so as he did before, when he snuck out of the house, he grabbed his jeans and t-shirt, climbed out to the fire escape, went down the back, and started following the man. All of a sudden, the rag man stopped his cart. Still in the alley, he reached in and he pulled out the most beautiful handkerchief you had ever seen in your life. It was so beautiful, it looked like it was stitched with solid gold thread. He opened the latch on the back gate in someone's backyard and he walked in. Walking up to the back porch as the boy was watching, the boy noticed there's a woman sitting on the back porch. Her face was buried in a handkerchief and she was crying so hard that her shoulders shook when she took her next breath. The rag man leaned in and he said, trade your old for new. She looked up at him and through her tears said, thank you. As she took the rag man's handkerchief and placed it to her face, her tears stopped. As the rag man turned and put her handkerchief to his face, the tears began to flow. By the time he got to his cart, he would breathe in and his shoulder would shake. He's crying so hard. And between the tears, he picked up his card and started saying, Rags! Rags! Trade your old! And he stopped again. Right at the opening to the main street. He reached in. And this time he pulled out a beanie or a bonnet. It was beautiful. 
turning, looking at all the trash cans. They were so full that they had plastic trash bags. And he walked toward the trash. And as he got close, the teenager's like, what is he doing? And all of a sudden, there was a girl sitting with the trash. She had a bandage wrapped around her head and one trickle of blood going down her cheek. How she got hurt, no one knew. But the rag man leaned in and said, trade your old for new. The girl was awake. Her eyes were open, but it looked like no one was home. With a blank stare, as slow as slow motion, she nodded yes. And he handed her the bonnet and began to unwrap the bandages around her head. Now, this is where it gets crazy. The teenage boy kind of gasped and went, no way. Because as he undid the bandages, the trickle of blood going down her cheek reversed and went back up again. As he took off the bandage and she put the bonnet on her head, she shook her head twice, blinked three times, and it was as if the lights came on. And she was like, thank you, and began to cry. Before she could hug the rag man, he had already started putting her bandage on him and the blood began to flow down his face. Weeping and crying, now bleeding, he grabs his cart, turns on the main street and starts screaming and singing again, rags, rags, trade your old for new. Now the sun's up. There was a man leaning against a light pole, both hands in each pocket. He was cool. When he came up to him, he put his cart down. The teenager's thinking to himself, what is he going to say? The rag man changed his speech. And he looked at the man and he said, sir, sir, are you going to work today? The man didn't act like he wasn't talking to him. And he did again, sir, excuse me, are you going to work today? And the man kind of scooched to his right to turn his back toward the rag man. And now the rag man switched again and he said, sir. Give me your coat, please. Give me your coat. And the man said, what's wrong with you? Just leave me alone. He goes, sir, please, just give me your coat. Everybody look at Reggie. You got to see this. The man said, fine. Now look at this. This is weird. To take his coat off, the man took his left arm and just swung it back, all right? And he took his arm out of his coat. And as fast as he could, he took his left arm and reached over here and grabbed his coat. Why did he do that? Because he had no right arm. He had shoved the sleeves in the pocket to make it look like it was there. But it wasn't. Maybe I need to back up for a second. Some of y'all smart. You figured this thing out. My mama's telling us the story of Jesus. He the rag man. Just in case. I don't be laughing. Some people are like, I like this rag man. Can I back up? There's a reason why I'm doing this story today. Because sitting in this room right now, right here, there's a young lady. And you're on the back porch of your life. And you're weeping in your handkerchief because you have regrets in your past. Things you wish you had never done. Things that happened that you wish you could change. But who could change the past? You cannot change the past. You can only change the future. I'm here to tell you right now that you know what? The rag man is not in some city. He's in Tulsa today. The rag man ain't in some alley. He's walking through the aisles right now. And he's looking at you and he's saying to trade your old for new trade your sorrow for joy hey give it to me give it to me and there's somebody in this room you're just weeping on your back porch had no idea that Jesus is unlatching the back gate of your house the back gate of your life he's walking into your backyard he's walking up to your back porch he sees you he knows you and he's giving you a chance on a Sunday morning to trade it in somebody touch your neighbor and say he loves you too much to leave you here Man, this is good. The brother on the second row, you like it, don't you? I know, man. I got you. You keep smiling. I'll keep preaching. But I only got 11 minutes. All right. Everybody look at Reggie. Oh, you thought I was some joker. What, you, you think I'm funny? I'm funny just to break down the walls and to throw Jesus up at you. Everything. Oh, the saxophone? Music opens the heart so that the word of God could change your soul. Everything has a purpose. Everything I do. But here's the deal. Hey, watch this. Anybody ever do something you wish you had never done? Anybody ever go somewhere you wish you hadn't gone? Hey, let me ask you this. I haven't asked any of the service this. 
Hey, anybody ever wake up three, four o'clock in the morning, you wide awake? And you close your eyes and go back to sleep and it's like a movie in your head from something in your past that you hated? It's kind of like being in a band just sitting with the trash. Because you think you, what did that pastor say when he was up here? You think you have disqualified yourself from what God can do? Oh, no. you just bleeding. Bleeding people think the bleeding will never stop. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus is looking at you right now. And he's saying, give me the bandages. Let me undo it. Let me undo it. And the blood's going to stop. And it's going to turn. And it's going to go back. Why? Because he's going to change the way you see your past. You can't change your past. He'll just change the way you see it. It's deep. Thank you, Pastor. We didn't do that any other session. I wonder whose that is. Who is that for this morning? I'm just here to tell you right now, he's walking by you. And then there's somebody in this room this morning, leaning against the lamppost of life. You fake every Sunday, pretending that you're in when you're really out. Every now and then a song will play to make you have to get up and go to the bathroom, doesn't it? Because you know you can't be living the way you're living. Some of you, your heart's pounding today of the regrets that you did last night or Friday. And you're like, I can never be the same again. I can never get it back. I can't. You're right. You cannot. The craziest thing about this story, my mama said to us, when Jesus took his jacket off, He did it the same way that the man did. Left hand out, left hand over, grabbed his jacket. But what made that teenager scream is when the rag man took his coat off, his right arm stayed in the jacket. Hello. And when the man leaning against the pole put the rag man's coat on, what was lost was found. What was broken was healed. What has been taken away was given back. Oh, y'all got this. You might as well just go ahead. Just let me put it to you in English. He can bring back what you've lost. He can fix because he was the one who paid the ransom. He owns the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He's your answer. He's your hope. He can put it back together again. It's your choice, though. Mama said in every story, the rag man said, trade 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 he never forced anybody but everybody had to willingly give them the hurt give him their sorrow give him their past today you got to give it to Jesus because he's calling you he's calling you I got to finish now the rag man has one arm pushing an ugly cart down Main Street when he turned a certain direction The teenager said, there's nothing down here but the junkyard. Why is he going to the junkyard? Weeping, crying, bleeding, one arm. As he almost got to the junkyard, he heard a man coughing. (coughs) Not I need a drink of water cough, a cough like I'm about to die. On the side of the road, wrapped in an army blanket, couldn't even see his face, was an old man. He got that blanket back in the war. Kept it every day, remembering what yesterday was. The rag man reached into his cart with one arm and pulled out the most beautiful blanket you ever seen. When he walked over to the army man wrapped in his blanket, he tapped him on the shoulder. The man peeked out from under the blanket and the old man said, Jesus, what you doing here? Oh, by the way, you can fool a lot of people all the time, but you can't fool old people none of the time. He knew exactly who that man was. He knew exactly what was going down. Jesus, and Jesus said, trade your old for new. Trade your old for new. Slowly but surely, he snapped his blanket a couple of times, folded it as nice as he could, and he handed it to Jesus. The memory of war. The tragedy of loss. Did I do the right thing? Am I a monster? Am I a monster? All that stuff was wrapped in that blanket. And then Jesus unfolded his and wrapped him in it, kissed the old man on the forehead, and he said, I'm proud of you. I think some of you got this, don't you? With one arm, weeping, crying, bleeding, Jesus goes into the garbage dump. There was one hill, the biggest dump hill you've ever seen in your life. In the old school, they called it Calvary. 
with one arm weeping, crying, coughing, bleeding. He climbed his way up that hill. The teenager wanted to help him, but he knew he couldn't. As he got to the top of the hill, Jesus unfolded that army blanket, wrapped it around himself, laid down on the hill, and he took his last breath and he died. At the bottom of that heap was an old burnout car. Little teenager laid in that car crying. Why did he do this? My mama said that the boy fell asleep and he was so tired. He slept all day Saturday and didn't wake up till Sunday morning. And what woke him was the brightest light he ever seen. He's like, I got to get home. The sun's up. This is crazy. But then he realized it wasn't the sun in the sky. It was the sun on the hill. And there he is, the rag man. 6'4", arms like tree branches. Looked like Thor before the last movie. And Jesus looked down at that teenager and he said, Son, what do you want me to do? And a teenage boy looked up and said, Ragman, would you dress me? Would you clothe me? Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for every man, woman, boy, and girl here. God, I know it's different, but God, you're the author of different. God, I know it's strange, but God, you're the author of strange. But God, this comes down to straight up two things. the hurting people and the people who need to be saved. So I'm speaking to those who need to be saved. With every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. You found yourself in victory with sin in your life. You ended up in this room right now, whether your mom brought you, your dad, a friend, but you're like sitting there and you're like, can he love me? Can he help me? Can he save me? The answer is yes, but the decision is up to you. All Jesus can say is, hand me, trade me, trade me. Give me your hurt. Give me your sorrow. Give me your sin. Give me your past. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. It says in Romans 10, 9, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Who needs him this morning is the question. And I'm going old school, y'all. So I'm going to start at the number 25 and I'm going to end at zero. Whoever's down front, when I got to zero, you're saying, I need Jesus. I've walked, I've sinned in my life. I've messed up. I need to come home. I need him to be Lord of my life. You're doing Romans 10, 9, and we're going to pray together. But you got to move. Some of you like, oh, I'm, I'm, I think we just bow our head and close our eyes around here. I ain't from here. I'm from the hood. We run to the altar like Medea movies, but in the real sense of the word. So here it is. I'm going to start at 25. I'm going to stop at zero. If you need to get right with God, you need to get here starting right now. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, come on, 11. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you want to go? I'll go with you. Grab your friend and say, you know you need this. Grab your relative and say, come on. 7, 6. Keep coming, keep coming. 5, I'll keep counting. Keep coming. 4. Keep coming, keep coming. Three, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, keep coming. In Jesus' name, keep coming. In Jesus, wow, come on. Hey, victory, all heaven is rejoicing. Let's help them right now. Let's encourage somebody. Let's get on our feet and clap your hands and shout to the Lord for what he's done this morning in church. Do me a favor, stretch your hand toward them. Everybody, we're saying a prayer. We're asking Jesus to forgive us. You know you need this. Just repeat after me. You ready? Everybody say, Jesus, this is my day. And I'm asking you, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. I need you more than anything. Replace what's broken. Fix what's lost. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead.
and he did it for me. So this morning, right now, be my Lord, be my Savior. And in Jesus' name, I'm saved. I'm saved. Thank God Almighty, I'm saved. Somebody clap your hands, all you people. Hey, everybody down front. There's somebody near you right now that's just going to talk to you. But I got to do one more prayer before I walk off this stage. If you're going through a hard time, you're struggling with an issue, I need you just to wave at me. Something horrible, something situation you need God to come through. No matter where you're sitting, just wave as hard as you can like somebody drowning. We're going to pray for you. You're waving so that some of my family can put their hand on your shoulder and let you know you're not alone. Somebody put your hand on their shoulder. Even up high, up high. There's a lot of people up there. Put your hand on their shoulder. Put your hand. Let's pray. Jesus, I pray in Jesus' name that you would answer the prayer answer the cry of their heart God be a will within the will be the crow in the middle of their storm be peace give them what they need today and God we thank you for victory in Jesus our Savior forever and it's in your name we pray